Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and today with a topic that has been requested a lot which is how to install Android on a Raspberry Pi 4 and if it's worth it or not. Now, a complete spoiler, in my opinion it's not, although it's great to play around and have all, I don't know, this kind of experience which I love and I know a lot of you do as well. In terms of real world performance and real usage, it's still not worth it. So if you want to find out why stick around which i will explain in just a few moments but we will start with the installation which is very easy and one thing that i would like to mention is that i will leave the link down below for all the credits because the guide was not made by me i didn't invent anything so all the credits for constakang.com link will be down below and don't forget to leave a huge thumbs up right over there for him uh, because it is a great job although not perfect yet as i said it is a great job indeed and this was the best that I found so far so that's why I'm going to share with you guys now in terms of installation really really easy just follow the link that I just mentioned uh, down below and then you will be able to follow the full guide and you will be able also to download the image to your computer and then I usually use Belena Etcher which is available for Windows Mac OS and so on and so forth so that we can install operating systems to a micro SD card or SD card we have done this in the past for other operating systems on the Raspberry Pi 4 and after that we have the operating system ready on the SD card or the micro SD sorry and just plug it in on our Raspberry Pi 4 and power it on. That's about it. Now after that we will need to configure uh, the operating system which is basically Lineage OS. As you guys know it's a skin based on Android. If you don't know just search on Google and you will find all the information. It's a very elegant Android built, at least in my opinion. Now, in terms of configuration, really easy. We just need to select a few things like we do on any mobile phone, on any tablet that has Android, like languages, time zone, Wi Fi, and so on and so forth. Now, have in mind that Play Store is not included. So, if you want to have Play Store fully enabled on the uh, full guide, you will find information for that. It will give us a little bit more of a headache, but it's possible. Now, the alternative is to use any of the other stores available online like Aptoid and so on and so forth so that we can install apps. And once we have one of those, then we can install. Having that in mind, just use it at your own caution. I don't have any issues in using it, but I can't say that it's 100% Safe. Now, having that all in mind, it's the easiest way to get apps. Of course, we can always download APKs, but it's more user friendly to use a store like Aptoid or Aptoid TV. Now, once we have one of those stores, we just need to install our apps. And one of the things that uh, on the constakang.com site mentioned is that we will not have the graphical performance that we are used to on Android devices and this will be the biggest limitation that we will have because everything is great but we will feel the machine sluggish and as you may imagine the experience will not be the best when we move from menu to menu it will be slow and then when we use apps for media for example the experience will not be as good as well I did test out with Plex and Plex the experience was not bad streaming videos at 720 so no problems there at least and streaming videos from the Plex server. Now, I also tested Kodi and there I had a lot of issues. Actually, I passed about 45 to one hour trying to fix the resolution and so on and so forth, but I was not able, so I just gave up. And what it happened was a, besides the screen not being able to capture the old screen, which was a 720p, uh, it also dropped a lot of frames while playing back a movie so decoding video will not be great on this well it will not be acceptable even not great <laughs> now in terms of gaming i did test out one or two games but the result was the same i was not able to run any of them even lower end games and probably there is one or other that we can run but the test that i made just did not work keep crashing and crashing and i believe that even if i could run the game for the type of performance that i've seen it would not be able to run the game 
at an acceptable performance. So guys, to wrap it up, it is really interesting. Once again, thumbs up for Gostekang.com, which developed this guide and this build, which is great to play around with it, to have an experience, a different experience with the Raspberry Pi 4. I did enjoy it a lot. Hopefully you guys find it useful as well, but in terms of using for the day-to-day -day usage, still not ready. Hopefully it will be soon and we can have also Android full-fledged Android right over here so that we can take advantage of another operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4 which is a great and incredible machine and that's about it. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.